George Galloway, it seems your unveiling wasn't quite the triumph that grassroots well, out uh, would have hoped. Well, not for the first time. You've misled me uh, by asking me to come in and talk about the referendum, but instead wanting to talk about... Me. I'm sure we if haven't you, misled you. you. Hang had... on, hang on, hang on. No, no, I'm sure no, no, we I haven't misled on. you. No, I won't hang on. If you had told me what, that, I was coming in, that I was coming in to discuss me, I would have said there are much bigger issues that the British people are occupied by than six or however many vox pops but you this had. this is going on to people. the issue, as you say, of the referendum. Well, because th it's let's talk powerful. about the referendum, All right, but shall just, we? Let's, let's just talk about well, the yes, but I want you to shall answer we? this. You want to defend you know, what you're doing here. I don't here. want to defend me at all. You're not my judge. You're not fit to be my judge. Well, thank you very much. All I'm trying to say is, are you going to be a benefit to this campaign well, if there are people that are going to walk out? You asked me to come in to this studio. Yes. I didn't ask you. You told me you wanted to hear my views on the referendum and I do. on the European Union. So can we move on to that, please? Well, are you happy to link arms, to use the Prime Minister's expression, I don't with others that you, with that you do anybody. not agree with? I don't link arms with anybody. Well, you are I metaphorically have a point. It's a binary. It's a binary choice. Right. You're in or you're out. The last fellow you had on who said he wouldn't share a platform with me claimed £40,000 off the taxpayer to heat his horses in a stable. Right, well, Would on. I really want to link arms with him? No. But if he can bring any no voters into the polling booth, and if I can bring any no voters into the polling booth, I hope that that will be enough. So this win. issue, what we were trying to say about this whole interview, mm. is that this issue, as far as you're concerned, is bigger it's than childish. people's... Pers the it's people's such a childish but, well, except, thing. Except, you know, well, Tony Blair is for yes. Does that mean that anybody... Uh, who's for yes is associated with Tony Blair. It's such childish discourse. Right, except that political bedfellows can sometimes lead people to say, oh, is one being authentic about the issue? If, for example, you said about Nigel Farage, his aid smear should disqualify him from any civilised company henceforth. But you're going to put that aside in order to campaign for this issue, which you think is bigger... It's bigger than, than all issues. Right. It okay. will affect so what the do lives, you say... the future of all of our people for the rest of time. So what do you say to those people who obviously don't feel it is bigger than their personal antipathy well, towards you? Well, more fool them. I hope they're not going to vote for the European Union because they don't like me. That would be a very foolish and childish thing to do. But are you worried that you might be turning off some people who would like to support grassroots? But you out? asked me to come here. Presumably because you thought I had something that some people might be interested to hear. Yes, and we will get on to it. But it is important, isn't it, well, if you're trying to push... I don't know when push... we'll get on to it. We're almost finished the interview. How do you know? Might have you on here for another 10, 15 minutes. I very much now, look, doubt that. You're right. I'm not going to have you on for a 10, 15 minutes. But if you're going to convince people of an argument, they've got to believe in the big players Please that are there. Please stop this. Please stop this. You misled me into coming in here today. And every question you've asked has been about me. I'm campaigning amongst my one million followers on social media, on the radio, on the television, on platforms, on the streets, for Britain to leave for a series of important reasons to which you have not yet turned. I will get to it if you would just answer the one question then. No, but I don't want... When have you ever not wanted so to talk about you, George Galloway? it's so Galloway. childish. It's so tabloid. It's so Daily Mail. God forbid we should ever be tabloid here at the BBC. Are you and Nigel Farage going to be able to attract and keep enough support for this campaign that you say is important enough well, to override any well, other personality or politics? I don't know because the public haven't voted yet. But I am convinced that Britain should leave. So is Boris Johnson for his own reasons. So is Nigel Farage for his own reasons. What is the overriding reason for you campaigning Because out? I believe in democracy. I believe that Britain should control its own events, who comes into our country, who can be told to leave our country, what our foreign policy should be, what our economic policy should be, should be decided by the British people in a British parliament. It's not rocket science. Have you always held that position? I have always believed that we should in pull out of the EU. In 1975, I campaigned. But a lot of people in I, the Labour I, I, Party I, at that time yes, also campaigned to orthodox. come out. What I'm saying now was orthodox in the Labour Party, and I cling to the views about the EU of Mr Ben. But the last straw for me <sighs> yes, what, was Greece, was the crushing mm. of democracy in Greece, which told me, and ought to tell Jeremy Corbyn and John MacDonald, that if they attempted to implement the kind of policies 
which they believe are necessary, and I agree, then they will be crushed underfoot by the EU bureaucracy and by the power of the European So you have Union. returned to the issue of workers' rights, which yes. was actually what the basis of it, Labour's it, division in 1975. It, it, so are you disappointed that somebody like Jeremy Corbyn isn't pushing harder to actually look at that issue? Well, I think that the Prime Minister's negotiation was flannel. It was uh, smoke and mirrors. If Jeremy Corbyn had been going into those negotiations, he would have raised far more fundamental issues. I know why, given the domestic balance of forces within the British Labour Party, why Jeremy Corbyn has been frankly hobbled on this question. But I'm clinging to the view I took under the leadership of Tony Benn, and I'll continue to do it with all my breath. If anyone is persuaded by it, I'll be happy. There you go. You had your say then, finally, on the issue. George Galloway.